Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? I'm pretty excited because this coming week, less than a week, I think next next Monday, the third, I'm going to be uh, running a session of all for one Regime Diabolique for our four Game Master campaign. So this should be a lot of fun. I've enjoyed playing in it, and I really enjoyed watching last night. Runeslinger did a uh, a solar adventure, if you will, for JDRD30, and so it was really entertaining to watch Brice Coeur get into trouble on a night on the town. You know, Francois is a great role player. You know, just. I was laughing a lot, and uh, uh, Anthony is a great game master, so it was really, really entertaining to watch. I'm not usually somebody that watches a lot of other people's games. It takes it takes a while for me to sit down or listen to it, you know, when I can. But because you know, it's part of our campaign too, and because those two are so entertaining, that was just a great time. This video is not about that. I'm going to talk about some things that I really, really like, and something that I'm you know, thinking about doing. Um, Anyhow, I really, really like games or stories, for this that matter, where magic is viewed as this really powerful, dangerous force. Like if you mess with it, you can produce really incredible and powerful effects. However, you know you run the risk of getting hurt or getting corrupted. I really like the corruption idea. Something like Circle of Hands has a really nifty corruption mechanic. It doesn't matter whether you're casting white magic or black magic, Emborian or Rabaja, they will both mark you. They will both change you over time. And yes, you may get some nifty little effects, you know, as a result of getting marked, but at a horrible, horrible price. So not something to mess with lightly. Um, also, like, I don't have that big giant dictionary, Dungeon Crawl Classics, yet. One day I'll buy that thing. Uh, but I like that mercurial magic system they have in there, where there's all that, that kind of corruption that can happen during spell failure and whatnot. I, I just like the idea that you, you change and become less human over time. So, another thing I really, really like is just plain old swords and sorcery. I, I like that kind of vibe. Um, I really like Ubiquity. I'm really enjoying playing those games. And I really like, not only the game, but I really love the magic system in Desolation which is uh, the first Ubiquity game I picked up, as a matter of fact, Grain Malcolm Games. Um, and I, I was thinking, like, you know, how do I um, use something like uh, the magic system, the really fast and loose freeform magic system in Desolation, but make it fit more of like a Swords and Sorcery vibe, and, you know, maybe throw in some kind of corruption mechanic. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to you know, tell you how the Desolation mechanic works, and then kind of, uh, you know, kind of give you some of my ideas. And I'm, this is like half-baked, but I'm really kind of enjoying this thought exercise. And, you know, Swords and Sorcery is probably, you know, way down the bottom of the list of something I do with Ubiquity because I want to try out some other things too, but it's, it's something I really want to get to. Um, anyhow, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, how this all works because the, the um, you know, Desolation is not Swords and Sorcery. This is High Fantasy brought low. There is a different conceit to this game and um, there's a different um, method they rein in magic. I'm not sure if I really want to use it using a swords and sorcery type uh, setting or campaign. So let's get right onto it. In any game, you need some kind of limiter, some kind of gate around or fence around magic because magic can be incredibly powerful and, and game breaking when it comes right down to it, right? So you got like old school games, OSR games like I grew up with and they have things like spell slots or spell points or you know caster level, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and games like Ubiquity handle it a little bit differently. Now, part of the deal is, you know, it, those things really don't work, you know, and I suppose you could use them if you wanted to. But you remember, in, in a game like Ubiquity, you know, you're the power um, level or the, the, uh, the, uh, Ascension level in power, the rise to power, is kind of scrunched down. You already start out relatively powerful, you know, not superhuman, and you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna get that much more powerful. I mean, over time, yes, you can, but it's it takes a long, long time. It's a lot different than that zero to hero, like you know, level one to level twenty, you know, rise in something like Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so because of that, you know, things like those spell points, you know, work less well. So you need some kind of other limiter around magic. You know, a game like All for One Regime Diabolique handles handles it really cool. Uh, Bells take time to cast. It takes time to cast those rituals, as we've seen if you watch some of those games, you know, where Martin a couple times just wasn't able to get a spell off. And in another time, it took him forever to uh, to cast one of these rituals. It worked, but it takes time. There's also the Inquisition, you know, and if you get caught in uh, 17th century France practicing black magic, that's a bad deal, you know, pretty, pretty much career and life ending. In Desolation, you know, a lot of people don't like magic either because they think that's what caused the Night of Fire, the Night of the Apocalypse. However, you know, there's another limiter, and that's called Burn. Now, in Ubiquity, if you recall, if you've watched any of these videos, uh, and I, if you want to know more about the magic system in Ubiquity, uh, I'm going to hopefully link Runeslinger's video on magic to this. You know, um, I try to remember to do that. Uh, in all Ubiquity, pretty much you're rolling binary pass-fail dice. You're rolling a die pool. You figure out what your die pool is going to be based on your, your uh, ranks and the skill and what the base attribute is, all that kind of stuff. Um, and to power uh, magic in, in uh, Desolation, it's fast. It's not a ritual. 
it's really, really fast. You need a certain number of successes. And like everything in Ubiquity, you've got a base difficulty. Um, and that generally ranges from like one success, which is really, really easy, to six successes, which is nearly impossible. Like nobody gets to do that ever. Um, also in Desolation at that point, it's a freeform magic system. There's, um, it's not really important, but there's probably, I think there's something like nine different um, types of magic effects. You know, whether it's affecting an object, affecting a person, you know, healing, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's uh, something like eight different traditions, you know, things that you would think of, like, you know, necromancy and, and animism and sorcery and, you know, all that kind of good junk. You know, it's not really important, but there's, that's, there's a whole little vibe going on, elemental magic. Um, at that point, you know, you figured out, what do I want to do? And then there's a little helpful guidelines in this game um, to figure out, okay, well, how many difficulties, base difficulties, would something like that be? And then you um, can add some more... Um, uh, to your target number after you get the base difficulty based on things like the range, the duration you're going for, whether it's line of sight or not line of sight, you know, what's the area of effect, how many people do you want to affect, that kind of stuff. All that will add extra um, difficulty to your target number. The actual base target number is still very important because if somebody's trying to resist that magic, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, something where you're trying to damage them or they're trying to resist, like, being charmed or, you know, whatever, uh, they have a target, that gives them a target number. To actually uh, resist against using their willpower, using their defense, all that kind of good junk. Um, so at the end of the day, you come up with this target number. All right, I need to hit this target number. Roll a bunch of dice. In Desolation, uh, you have to roll the dice. You know, you can't just take the average. And also, the thing is, you don't have to roll your entire die pool. You can roll uh, as uh, as few as you want to. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, in Desolation, here's the thing. In the after, in the time of Desolation, after the Night of Fire, every failure you get gives you a point of burn, and burn is a form of damage, and uh, burn can knock you out, burn can you know render you unconscious for a long time, burn can kill you if you get enough of it. Uh, it heals at the rate of one point of burn every 30 minutes, and you know, characters don't have a heck of a lot of health ratings to begin with, so it's, just, it's really, um, it's dangerous, and you can leave you kind of incapacitated, and in a really tense situation where you might be casting magic, you know, that can be really bad if all of a sudden you're incapacitated. So it's a very dangerous thing. When I played a random one shot of Desolation for some friends here, and one of the guys calls it calls it the FU magic system because again, both both of them cast some really uh, cool and powerful effects and knock themselves right out <laughs> for for several minutes, which was pretty awesome. Uh, but you know, it can be it can be pretty deadly. In the before time in Desolation, it worked a little bit differently. Every success you got canceled out. A, um, a failure in terms of whether or not you got burned. So say you you had a target number of three, whatever kind of spell effect you were trying to get, um, you know, succeed or, or achieve at that point. Say you rolled six dice, you rolled three successes, three failures, which would be average. Well, not only did those three successes power your spell that needed three, but also um, they canceled out those three failures, so you suffered no burn. Not so in the after. You roll three and three in the after, yeah, your spell goes off that needed three successes, but you suffer three points of burn. There's a couple different ways you can uh, mitigate that damage in both the before and the after. Um, you can spend a style point, and every style point you spend can uh, cancel a uh, point of burn on a one-for-one -one basis. Uh, the other thing you can do is um, if you well, you can have it, if you have a, a uh, talisman or magic item, which are incredibly rare, that might or, or talent that helps you to mitigate burn or spread burn around, you can do that. That's less important for this example. Uh, the other thing you can do is any extra successes. Instead of um, fueling your magic effect and making it better, because in Desolation, no matter how many successes you get, as long as it's at least one, you still produce some form of magic. If it's less than the target number, well, it's not quite as what you wanted, but it's get in there. Uh, however, you can use extra, extra successes to make the magical effect even more powerful and more exciting and you know greater area of effect, last longer, all that kind of good junk. But instead of using it for that, you could use them on a one-to-one -one basis to mitigate burn. You know, it, it works a little bit different. Um, in, in the, it works exactly the same in the before and the after, but the idea being that there's less uh, times in the uh, in the before that you would really have the opportunity to do that, unless you had a really small target number of your spell, and you rolled you know a whole bunch of uh, failures, few successes, enough you know enough to power your spell, but you still uh, you still had some successes left over that were extra, which you decide well I'm going to mitigate that burn that uh, I didn't uh, catch with successes before. So that's how that works. However, you know, that, that type of effect can be really kind of cool for swords and sorcery, but that's not exactly what I was, I was going for. So I came up with this weird amalgam of that effect uh, in Desolation and Leagues of Gothic Horror, the horror and sanity mechanic. Because I realized this game has like this built-in mechanic uh, for some kind of a countdown. Um, so I'm going to use the terms they use in Leagues of Gothic Horror um, 
even though they really don't mean this. And in fact, there's a, there's a term in the least of Gothic horror called corruption, which ha has to do with you um, performing evil acts. And eventually you can become so corrupt that you, you become a non-player character. So unfortunately I'm using the same word, but it's not really a really good synonym for that. So I'm gonna use the word corruption. So sorry, ubiquity purists. You know, anyhow, so I'm thinking, you know, what I would love to do in something like uh, a swords and sorcery game is first, you know, have burn like it worked in the before. So in other words, um, you roll every success you roll cancels out a, um, a failure, cancels out a point of burn. But every once in a while, you're going to roll more failures than you are successes. Maybe you're going to roll an eight die pool. You're going to roll five uh, failures, three successes. At that point, you're going to suffer two points of burn. OK, so it happens a lot less frequently than it would in straight up desolation. So have it work like that. However, I also want to build in some kind of countdown to corruption. Uh, and so they have this great thing built right into Leagues of Gothic Horror. They've got this the horror and sanity mechanic. The sanity mechanic is every character has a sanity rating, and it's based on adding together your charisma and your willpower. So it's a secondary attribute. So most people have something like a four. You know, um, the average is two. Of course, many characters would have something like a five in general. It's, it looks like that tends to happen a lot of times. Somebody decides to pump up charisma or pump up willpower. I think I said willpower, not wisdom, willpower. You know, old habits die hard, kids. Anyhow, so that's that's your uh, that's your your uh, sanity. So we're going to keep calling it sanity, but even really, what I probably should call it is like humanity. Your countdown to getting another mark. Um, then there's uh, something called horror and various um, things you might uh, encounter. Uh, like an awful black magic ritual, for example, that you see somebody else doing, or encountering a murdered person, or you know, seeing some horrific monster. These all have horror ratings, and the horror ratings tend to go from like I think it's like one to six at that point. So it's something that would cause you to make a uh, sanity roll or a willpower roll at this point. So say you uh, you see something particularly horrific, say it has a horror rating of three, you make a reflexive willpower roll. When the re reflexive willpower rolls, you have to roll, uh, you roll, get to roll twice your willpower. So say you have a two willpower of two, you get to roll four dice. Um, you want to roll equal to or greater than uh, that uh, that horrific thing you witnessed. So say you, uh, you witness this horrible thing that has a horror rating of three, you roll your four dice, you get just two successes, you got the average. Well, at that point, you take one point of sanity damage. So I'm thinking that's really kind of a neat built-in sort of thing. So I decide, hey, here's the deal. Um, in uh, this like swords and sorcery version of Desolation Magic, um, sure, the burn works like it did in the before. So it's rather, you know, it's, it doesn't happen very frequently. However, this corruption works just like burn did in the after. So every failure uh, equals a point of, we'll call it horror, you know. It's this thing that you now have to roll against. So say you uh, cast a spell, um, you have three failures. Now that's something you need to roll your willpower against. So you've got that willpower of four or you know two, so you get to roll four dice. Say once again, you roll, say you roll one success. At that point, you take two points of sanity or humanity damage. This doesn't do anything to you yet. That's exactly how the sanity mechanic works. Eventually, if you get down to negative five sanity, you're completely nuts, you're insane, you're, you're, you're a non-player character. There's ways to regain sanity in that game. However, I'm thinking in, uh, if you're going to be a spellcaster in a swords and sorcery game, you're probably going to be casting magic a lot more often than you're going to be running across dead bodies or horrific monsters in Leagues of Gothic Horror. One would hope. One would hope the idea is that you're going to be casting magic. You don't want to become completely corrupt or unplayable in, in a matter of minutes, right? Okay, so let's make it a little bit more... Uh, fun and fair <laughs> so the idea is okay you, you you have this happen so you say you uh, you know you cast your spell you just roll one success well now you've taken two points of damage to your humanity now this isn't a forever thing it's like the idea is once you get down to uh, say zero now in this old sanity mechanic or the, the sanity mechanic of leagues of gothic car at that point um you become it's just like being injured and being down to zero health you can only take one action per round you're pretty much like you know a blither and idiot at that point if it's we're talking about sanity we're talking about this humanity countdown at this point nothing really happens to you except you can feel the change coming on and maybe at that point you can still use a point of style to mitigate um the uh the uh, damage to your humanity but say now at this point on a one-for-one -one basis, and say now at this point, uh, you, you have to use two style points in order to mitigate one point of damage to your humanity. And by the way, speaking of style, the other thing I figured I'd do with this is if you're going to use style points to mitigate burn or mitigate um, damage to your humanity, your, you know, your uh, sanity, uh, at this point you have to choose. What am I going to spend the style point on, one or the other? Okay. 
Anyhow, getting back to this rather complex explanation of a rather simple mechanic <laughs> in my head, um, once you get down to negative five, okay, you didn't lose the character, but now they have a mark. Now something happened. Now the, you know, maybe some part of them has changed. Maybe they become less human. What happens then? Make it up. Random table. You guys figure out what's going to be fun. You know, take the gloves off at that point. That should be a lot of fun. Not going to make the character unplayable, but you've gotten this mark. Something about your character has changed. Maybe it's harder for you to be around other people. Maybe you, you picked up some kind of psychological flaw or quirk. Maybe physically. Maybe you've gone a tentacle. I don't know. Whatever the heck it is. And then you reset the clock. And then you're back down to your, to your um, say, four points of humanity. Whatever it has you happen to, happen to have. And you keep casting magic. You keep casting spells. And every once in a while you fail. And sooner or later you develop another mark. Seems to be kind of cool. Kind of fun. Um, Yes, over time, would your character become um, really deformed, grotesque, and perhaps corrupted beyond all recognition by the black forces of magic? Yeah. It's swords and sorcery, dude. Get over it. So, um, yeah, that's my my, uh, my idea for some kind of corruption mechanic. Using Ubiquity, using the great... Um, I just really love the magic system and Desolation. Um, but making, the ma once again, magic dangerous. You don't experience burn every once in a while, but maybe every once in a while you do kind of knock yourself out or, you know, get a little damage for a while. Wow, that was really, it took a lot of effort. And then every once in a while, yeah, well, you get a little corrupted. You get a little less human. So that's, uh, that's my long explanation of a simple idea. What do you think of that, kids?